The Cat Who Walked Across France by Kate Banks and pictures by George Hallensleben. For many years, the cat had lived in the stone house by the edge of the sea. He chased the wind that scuttled through the garden. He watched the birds flitter from tree to tree. At dusk, he curled up in the bend of the old woman's arm. The old woman would scratch the cat's ears and stroke his back. Good kitty, good kitty. Then one day, the old woman died. Her belongings, along with the cat, were shipped north to the house where she was born. But there was no one to scratch the cat's ears or stroke his back. And soon the cat was forgotten. He prowled the streets begging for scraps to eat and fleeing from stray dogs. Until one day he left. He roamed the countryside, circling pastures where animals grazed, and he watched his own shadow lengthen as each day drew to a close. At night, he sheltered himself in a lonely barn. He lay in a pile of stiff hay, but when he closed his eyes, he could feel the softness of the bluegrass that grew behind the stone house by the edge of the sea. At daybreak, the cat would bathe himself in the first rays of the sun. Then he would trot off. Sometimes he strolled, other times he slunk. He learned to hunt field mice and birds and drink from village fountains. Once someone set a bowl of milk under his nose and he thought of staying, but then a voice cried, run along now. Big cities loomed large bustling and brimming with noise, but the cat scampered bravely down the wide avenues, dodging cars and bicycles. Children playing ball would chase after him or cry, shoo, shoo, and the cat would scurry up a tree. When he nestled in its branches, he would remember the tangy smell of lemons ripening on a branch under a window at the stone house by the edge of the sea and he would move on. The cat pranced over bridges and bristled at the thundering trains that passed. At dusk, he would lick the dirt from his face and paws. In his dreams, he could hear the twigs snapping and the crunch of dried leaves as he circled around the stone house by the edge of the sea. Weeks passed. Then months, the cat measured time against the weathered soles of his feet. His fur grew scruffy. Now and again, he would stop to linger on a grassy bank or in the cool shade of an ancient wall. Or he would pause to watch a barge gliding down a canal. When it rained, the cat took refuge under a friendly rafter. He was lonely and tired, but when the storm passed, he would march on, driven by the taste of the salty air that blew off the water and coated the bench behind the stone house by the edge of the sea. When the cat came to a river, he would stop for a drink. He would watch the fish jump in the wide arcs over the water, and he would cry, meow. Then he would stretch his legs, arch his back and continue on his way. Sometimes he stopped to romp in the fields. He rolled in the tall grass and skipped over buttercups. But when he came to the fields of lavender, a memory stirred and the cat saw the blue door of the stone house by the edge of the sea and the soft light in the hallway that seemed to say, come right in. The cat was thin and frail when he wandered into the port. The boats with their flapping sails told him he was nearby.
At last, he walked up to the gate of the stone house by the edge of the sea. The front door was wide open. The cat walked in. He settled into a warm spot and fell asleep. He awoke to the sound of voices. Where did it come from? Do you suppose it's lost? A boy and girl were standing over him talking. A platter of food was set on the floor and a bowl of fresh water. The cat shied away. Here, kitty, said a soft voice. A hand reached under the cat's chin and scratched. The cat began to purr. He closed his eyes. He was reminded of the hands of an old woman stroking his back. He could hear her quiet breathing and gentle words. Good kitty. And he knew he was home. The end. <laughs>